Hello, I'm going to present you this project in which I wanted to take the challenge to read music from floppy disk in real time with an Arduino. Let me demonstrate the project. The first difficulty in this project is linked with the floppy disk themselves. In fact, the floppy disk interface is very, very simple. Basically, there is a wire on which you uh, send some voltage and the disk understands that it should spin. And when it spins, it just spins. You can control it like start and stop. Basically, you start it and then it reads the data. And then whatever goes under the reading head is sent in another wire. So basically, you cannot just say, go precisely there and read data from this point to this point. No, what you just, say, what you just can do is move the head to, to select the track, and then the disk just spins. And you have to catch the data as it comes. So this is actually quite difficult to do. And hopefully, someone has just released a month ago uh, um, a program for the Arduino that does just that. That's very difficult to do because uh, the data uh, comes at the speed that it comes and actually it's quite difficult to get it fast enough to read the data fast enough from the floppy disk and this is actually quite difficult but the guy who, uh, who did that uh, managed to do this time critical part using assembly decode. So here I have no merit on that part, I use the code written by that guy. But even with this library develop that get guy that I loaded on this first Arduino, there are still some difficult challenges. One is that this library needs to have complete control of the CPU when it receives the data from the floppy disk. So at that moment, it's not possible to send any data to the speaker. And this is a problem because we cannot interrupt the sound to read the floppy. We need to play the sound continuously. So we need some buffering. So this is why I need two Arduinos actually. This one just uses a modified version of the code to control the floppy drive. So most of the code is not written by me, but I wrote some code to interact with my other Arduino here. And the real work I did is on this Arduino and basically it's a buffering system. So it receives data, it, re it sometimes receives data through this green wire. It's actually serial data and it's arriving here at the RX pin. Here it's connected at the TX pin. So it's serial data sent at one megabit per second. And when it receives this data, it's going to store it in a, in a buffer, so in an array in memory. And then it's going to read continuously from this buffer. And the data is sent here in four bits to this uh, digital to analog converter, which is implemented using a resistor ladder. And this is just an amplifier circuit. And here the speaker is connected. So now that we have this buffering, we also need to give some feedback to the floppy disk controller here to tell it to continue to read the floppy if we have some more space in the buffer to store data or to tell it to stop if the buffer is full. So for that, I use this wire and it's very simple. It's a Boolean value, either it's high or low. If it's high, it tells the other Arduino to send some more data and to continue reading the floppy. If it's low, it tells it to wait because the buffer needs to um, to be emptied. Uh, here I can demonstrate this. For instance, here, if uh, instead I connect this wire to the ground, it's not going to send any data, so it's going to stop reading the floppy and it, it doesn't do anything at all. Here, the circuit is um, switching on this red LED, which indicates that the buffer is empty, so there is nothing to play. Here I have switched off the speaker anyway so that you can hear me better. But now if uh, I connect back the speaker and now I'm going not to connect it to the place where it's supposed to be connected but to connect it directly to 5 volts so that the, the other circuit sends data all the time. So you are going to see what happens when the buffer cannot keep up and that too much data is sent. What happens here is that when the, 
the, the yellow LED is on, it means that we have too much data and that basically we are throwing the extra data. And this is why you can see that the sound is actually kind, kind of awful because it jumps, because it needs to get rid of some data. You can hear it again. So now let's reconnect it so that the feedback is used and now you see it's going to go normal. And there it's okay. The, the green LED here is, uh, indicates that everything is going okay. And the yellow LED is when we have lost synchronization. Uh, it lights for one second if uh, the synchronization is not good. If I disconnect it temporarily and reconnect it, you're going to see it. A second difficulty is of course that floppy disks are kind of slow compared to the speed at which we want to play sound. So here I had to optimize everything. I had to send the data as fast as possible so that we can uh, go back to reading the floppy as soon as possible. So I'm sending the data at one megabit per second, which is the highest rate that it's possible to transfer from one Arduino to another. The second thing I optimized that I use only four bits. It lowers the quality, but it allows to store uh, an entire sound on a floppy first and to send it fast enough. But that's not enough. I also need to reduce the sampling rate. Typical audio is around 44 kilohertz. That means that 44,000 times a second, a value is measured and stored. So I reduce this rate to 8,000 hertz, 8 kilohertz, which is not very good quality. This is why you see that the sound is not very good, but it allows to uh, read it fast enough on the floppy. Finally, there is a specific challenge linked to the sector order. If you look at a floppy disk, it's actually made of tracks, which are like circles like this, and each track is made of sectors. So basically the sectors are numbered like this, and when the disk spins around, it, the reading head goes over all the sectors. So uh, a special difficulty here in my project is that when you have read sector one, then you need to send the data to the other Arduino. But uh, when the data has finished sending, we have missed the beginning of sector two. So basically we are somewhere there. So if we want to read sector two, we have to wait for a complete turn until we get back to the beginning of sector two. So basically the consequence of that is that if we read sector one, then sector two, then sector three, which is the normal order, it's going to be very slow. Actually, I have made some benchmarks in which I try skipping sector two and going directly to sector three, or even skipping sector two and three or going to sector four, etc. So the results of my benchmark are here. And as you can see, uh, depending on how much, it's, that is here it's if you, you jump to the next sector, then you skip one sector and you go plus two, plus three, etc. And this is the time to read the sector. And you can see that if we skip, if, if we exclude case number one, it, it goes linearly. And you can see that the maximum here is 180 milliseconds. And but the worst case is actually to read the next sector because of course it's just as I explained. So you need to wait for a complete turn to go back to the next sector. So in fact, reading sector after sector is the worst case possibility because it introduced these 200 milliseconds latencies. So I use a special trick, um, which is that I reorganized the data so that we read first all the even sectors. We read sector one, three, five, etc., and then we read all the, uh, sorry, we, we read first the odd sectors and then we read the even sectors, sector two, four, six, etc. So by reorganizing the data in this specific order and by like reading it in this specific order, we get a delay of only 16 milliseconds between sector reads. And that's very important because without it, the project wouldn't be possible at all. As a last bonus, I wanted to show you some visualization of the buffering. So here I use a special trick, 
which is that instead of sending the audio to the digital to analog converter, I send some value which represents how much the buffer is filled. So basically, the DAC here, I have added uh, four bits, by the way, I, to have a better resolution in eight bits. So the DAC here is actually uh, creating an analog value representing the buffer usage. So what you can see here on the oscilloscopes, and the oscilloscope here is uh, the serial data transmitted from the floppy drive controller Arduino to the sound player Arduino. And here, this represents how much the buffer is filled. So here is a zero when the buffer is empty, and here at the top is when the buffer is full. And you can see that when some serial data is received, you can see here that there is some serial data transmitted. So of course, the buffer is filled. Then the, um, the floppy drive controller is probably reading the floppy, so at that point it doesn't transmit any data, so the buffer uh, is being used and the data, the, the sound which is being played is from the buffer. And then it's reading, it, it has read a new floppy sector, it sends it to the serial line, so the buffer is filled again. So every time it goes down like this, it's because it is a new sector read. But there are also uh, track changes. So sometimes, as you can see on the floppy drive, it's uh, moving to read the next track. So when it's, it's moving to read the next track, uh, it takes a little longer. So we use a lot more the buffer. And actually, um, the buffer is just big enough to accommodate for that. But we had to use the entire Arduino memory to be able to uh, cope with the track changes. So you see, when it goes down a lot, it's, it's a track change like this. When you hear the, um, the head move, you see that there is at this exact moment um, a big fall like this. Okay, that's all. Thank you for watching my video.